I'm Sarah Jensen, editor of OEM Off Highway, and welcome to Design and Engineering Insights. Today, I'll be speaking with Steve Mundell, business unit manager at Parker Lord in the Sensing Group, uh, to talk about some of the techn sensing technology and automation trends the company is seeing. So thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having Thanks for me. Having me. So um, maybe we could just sort of start talking about uh, sensor technology in general and how you guys are seeing it aiding with the development of autonomous off-road equipment and systems. Um, so, you know, as far as aiding the development of autonomous off-road equipment, uh, you know, first and foremost, the technology is accelerating at a very, uh, a very quick rate right now. Um, and what that's allowing is uh, us to get a lot more precise measurements with sensors. And what that does is it makes it possible for the deployment of autonomous vehicles in, I guess, close proximity to humans and getting it where it's uh, putting the, the autonomous vehicles into areas that are, that are considerably more dangerous where typically you wouldn't want uh, workers to be. But it's really, a, first and foremost, it's a safety improvement um, as the, technology advances, um, it's aiding to improve the safety of all autonomous vehicles that are out there. Uh, in addition, uh, as, as we have more and more hands-on experience with these different applications, the algorithms that are deployed within the products are getting better and better. Uh, an example of that might be, uh, you may have heard about you know, recently, uh, Tesla had a vehicle that was driving down the road in, in California and a truck next next to it in the lane stopped aggressively and the vehicle recognized that as an impending accident and it slammed on its brakes even though the lane that it was in was clear. And so as we learn more about the different anomalies and things that can happen, we can continue to improve those those algorithms and make it so that the the autonomous vehicles that and the aided vehicles that are out there are considerably safer. Um, it's also really um, working on the efficiency across the board. So um, not just safety, but people want more efficiency in their operations. And so as these sen sensors begin to perform better and better, uh, we're able to navigate much more precisely to uh, where you're able to really coordinate your operation. If you can imagine a bunch of vehicles that are driving around near one another, uh, the better that you know where they are, the closer you can have them driving next to each other, as well as getting timing much more accurate so that you have vehicles that aren't um, sitting for a long period of time waiting to do work. Uh, the other is think of like a precision planter in the field as it gets more and more uh, precise as far as its location, you begin to get additional, um, uh, you know, be able to get a lot more yield, you know, in your field. Uh, the other is that you're getting, you're able to kind of have a lower skill set of people doing a uh, higher performing function. So you have an aided vehicle that is very accurate sensor on an autonomous vehicle, and they're able to perform tasks that they typically wouldn't be able to do without extensive training or many years of experience. And so you're able to have people who have slightly less uh, experience doing those types of things and making it much easier and safer for them to use those types of uh, pieces of equipment. An example there might be an excavator. You could have an excavator that typically you know, requires a significant amount of effort to learn how to use it efficiently and safely. And as you put in sensors that are able to make sure that they aren't tipping over, that you're not extending the boom too far, then you have someone who is able to sit down, start operating that piece of equipment without putting the operator or the piece of equipment at risk. Okay, great. So um, could you maybe talk a little bit about how specifically Parker Lord sensors are being used within autonomous systems and maybe some of the capabilities or benefits they're providing? Sure, so uh, we manufacture many different types of uh, inertial sensors that are used on autonomous vehicles everything from a VR sensor all the way up through to an inert, full inertial navigation system uh, with RTK-80. RTK uh, these allow you to actually understand where your 
uh, sensor is located anywhere on Earth to within the precision of about the you know the area of a dime. So very accurate uh, location, and those sense that allows our sensor to be to be deployed in many different applications. Now they're used right now for things like rollover detection. Uh, we use them in uh, precision location for planting and uh, vehicle navigation. Uh, they're used in mines. Uh, the inertial sensors measure the rate of rotation uh, when you don't have a GNSS signal. Uh, they're also used for mapping, so you can do mapping down mines. Uh, there's, as well as things like the legged robots, you may not typically think of a legged robot as something to be used in an off-highway application, but really that's the best type of, of uh, autonomous vehicle that can go over rough terrain. So if you're trying to climb over rocks and ledges, that sort of thing, you actually would need a legged vehicle to do that. A traditional wheeled vehicle would not work for that. And so our sensors are actually, it can be used as like the inner ear of that type of, a, of, a, of an autonomous vehicle. And what we do is in those applications, because you can imagine the temperature ranges those are operated in uh, can vary significantly. So if you have something up in Alaska versus something in, in Arizona, uh, you're going to have much different temperature extremes. And so what we do is we make all of our sensors, everything from the VR sensor all the way through the, uh, you know, the, what we consider the call the GQ7, which is the, uh, the full na inertial navigation system with the RTK-80. Uh, they are calibrated over uh, minus 40 to 85 degrees Celsius. So they, they work the same regardless of what the temperature is that your environment is uh, putting on the sensor. Uh, we've also found that often in these, in, when you're doing the initial development of these types of autonomous systems, you don't really know what your sensors uh, specifications need to be. And so in order to make it easy, you can actually take one of our sensors, plug in a higher performing product, kind of take that out of the equation as you go through your, your, your uh, programming of your, of your robotic system to make sure that everything else is working properly. And then in, as a part of a cost out process, you can actually just unplug one of our sensors, plug in a lower cost one and test very easily and see how, how low performing you can go and still get what you need out of your product. So that's kind of how our sensors are being used in autonomous systems and the, uh, what, what we do to them that helps uh, add some pretty good benefits in the design development and uh, deployment of an autonomous vehicle. Okay, great. Well, and so what are some of the current challenges you guys are maybe seeing in regards to developing and integrating sensor technologies for autonomous equipment? So really there's two big things that we're seeing. One is just general acceptance. So, uh, you know, pe people being around an autonomous vehicle is actually it's a, it's, you know, a lot of safety concerns and how people interact with them. So, you know, there's a lot of different companies out there that are trying to deploy autonomous vehicles that will be in close proximity to people. And there's a lot of concern about whether or not those will be even accepted, right? Everyone's heard about, uh, you know, delivery drones, you know, our people, you know, then you have a lot of talk about whether or not that's going to be, you know, people are going to like that or not. It's really about acceptance. So people need to accept having these autonomous vehicles, you know, within their society and near them in order for them to actually be able to be deployed the way that we want them to be, not by we, by, you know, everyone who's trying to do these types of uh, systems. The other is certification and regulation. And so as, as the government learns more about uh, what is needed uh, and what, where, they're go where these types of autonomous vehicles are going to be deployed, there's a lot of new certifications and regulations that are that are coming out that you need to comply with in order to make sure that they're safe enough to work within these environments. It's like you you know you have a flying drone and it needs to work within the same airspace as a civilian aircraft. So there is there's some very significant um, certifications and new regulations that are coming down from the government that we you need to make sure that you're able to comply with. And so those are really the the two big challenges that I see. The, but there's also, the, the other is the ability, you know, there's lots of different companies out there that manufacture sensors that can be used in these areas. 
And one thing that's difficult is make sure that you can produce those at a very high volume. Uh, so not only make a good product, but make that same product at high volume with the same level of performance and accuracy as you go from, you know, from building five to 10 of your robots to when you, you know, actually realize the, what you want to realize with success and maybe to be deploying, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. And so that's something that we've been thinking about in order to try to make sure that not only do we make great sensors, but also we can produce those in high volume at the same level of quality. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that, that's a good point. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Um, so then I guess just the last question I had is kind of how you guys maybe perceive sensor technology advancing in the coming, year, coming years and how that might aid with the further development of machine automation. Are there specific types of sensor technologies that you think will either come to market or further advance to help with the, the automation of heavy equipment? Yeah, I mean, what I'm really seeing, so there's many, many different sensors that people fuse together with the, sense, the types of sensors that, uh, that we manufacture, which are inertial sensors. So in autonomous vehicles, you know, there are, there's they use LIDAR, they have wheel speed sensors, vision systems. I mean, there's many, many different types of sensors that are being deployed. Today, most of those are really expensive. Uh, and so it can be difficult to be able to deploy those uh, in anything that could be uh, used in, you know, in a consumer level um, application. And even in the off highway, even though some of these vehicles are very high value, the, you know, these add significant cost. And so what, what I'm really seeing happening on the technology side is that these high performing sensors continue to reduce in cost. And so, you know, the ability to have, you know, LIDAR deployed on your system and before may have been cost prohibitive. And today, uh, you know, they're, they're actually getting into a much more reasonable range. And as, as time goes on, uh, they're gonna be very cost effective. And so then what happens is that more and more people want to deploy these types of systems on their vehicle, except they don't have the experts that are required in order to deploy them successfully. And so I see, at least in our industry, there's gonna be a continuing push to do a full navigation solution where you actually are fusing all the information from these types of sensors and providing that as one package out to different uh, customers so that people get what they need to without having to have that expertise on board. Um, the other that the redu reduction in cost is going to do is as it goes further, it'll be used in a lot more applications. Uh, we're gonna see that for consumer applications, you're already starting to see lawnmowers that are out there that are uh, mowing people's lawns. Those will become commonplace uh, and they'll it'll continue to deploy everywhere just because the more information you have about what your um, system is doing the better and you're able to then do things at an instantaneous level that human beings can't do right I mean our reaction time from vision to you know muscle movement is what you know half a second uh, right. whereas with these types of things it's you know we're talking milliseconds and that can be the difference between you know getting injured or not mm -hmm. right okay. well great um, I appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today and provide your insights into technology and trends that are going on currently with sensors and automation. No, not at all. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you.